Thousands of yards of cotton fabric were shipped via steamboat daily. 40,000 to 50,000 yards were sold annually at Seltzer Brothers in Canelton to the local population. That's a lot. This three-story brick mansion was built in 1873 by Elijah Curtis Clark and his wife Hester of the Canelton Pottery <coughs> Company. It's shown during the 1884 flood. It contained 15 rooms with two ballrooms for entertaining. Here's another photo of it, <clears throat> taken by Jacob Rowland, a Canelton photographer. His home, the home was between 1st and 2nd Street on Taylor in Canelton and was torn down in 1948. Canelton Knights of Columbus is on the left and Canelton High School is on the right. On 3rd Street again, a real busy street. The 1936 Tel City Gray semi-pro baseball team is shown. Edward Hipschman started the Pure Cream products in 1924 in the old Krogman Distillery Building at 747 6th Street in Tel City. Krogman had closed because of Indiana Prohibition that went into effect in 1918. Pure Cream Products principally manufactured ice cream. They also served their ice cream presumably at festivals and, and events from the trailer shown in the photo. That has their name on it. <coughs> Tulsa City has several steamboat homes. They were built using the <coughs> steamboat, which likely contains state rooms and dining rooms. This Paul's Steamboat House was located at 819 Main Street. Anton and Marianne Paul, brother and sister, are seen sitting on their Steamboat House porch. This is another Ann Manley photograph that she shared with us. <coughs> Tell City won the 1938 sectional. Coach Ray Eddy, seen on the far right, spent five seasons in Tell City. He became head coach at Purdue for 15 years and was inducted into the Indiana Hall of Fame in 1972. The Eagle Hotel was located on the west corner of 7th and Adams Street in Camelton, Indiana. An 1894 publication wrote about the popular hotel having above average meals, served quickly, <laughs> and rates as low as a dollar a day and $3.50 a week for board and lodging. The hotel is shown in this photo in 1938, just before it was raised in the 1940s, to make way for the garage built by Russell Sterrett, who lived next door, and it later became the Canton Utility Garage that's there today. <coughs> The first Hamilton Pottery Company, Clark & Company, was formed in 1862 using clay found in a five to six foot veins under the coal that they mined in Hamilton. Mrs. Margaret Clark, a 56-year-old widow, and her five sons, Roan, William, Abram, and Elijah Clark, moved to Hamilton and began making pottery at 1st and Hafley Streets until 19. Well, John Clark, no relation to the other Clarks, uh, the Clark owners, worked as a kiln burner for the original Clarks, but he named his sons after the original Clark brothers, Charles, Curtis, Roan, the same names, and they started the Canton Stoneware and Clay Manufacturing Company in 1892 on the east on East 7th Street or Sulphur Springs Road in Canelton and operated successfully until 1939. For eight years, there were two Clark Pottery operating independently of each other. A third Canelton Stoneware and Pottery Company located on 1st Street, um, which is shown there, was established by a group of local businessmen. 
They operated from 1908 to 1925 and were not very successful. And the building became an apartment building. Mm -hmm. This is Werner, uh, Werner Motor Company sponsored a baseball team shown posed on one of their cars. Werner's operated the first taxi in Perry County. Their taxi drivers, Gooseberry Pile and Honky Pile, <laughs> would fill their Model T with as many passengers as possible, many of them standing on the running boards, for Sunday afternoon baseball games. For a 10 cent fare, many people experienced their first automobile ride on the way to the baseball game. And the photo shows uh, uh, Gooseberry. That's Gooseberry. This is Myers Grade School in Candleton. They had a drum and bugle band in 1941. Cutie pies there. Gustav Kammerling of Tell City served in the Civil War and obtained the rank of Brigadier General in 1864, but preferred to be called Colonel Kammerling. He lived uh, at Cameroon Hill, 425 10th Street in Tell City, and worked with his brother-in-law after the Civil War, uh, who was Charles Steinauer at the Flower Mill. Mr. Cameroon's son, Gustav Jr., retired from the Navy in, Navy in 1922 with the rank of Rear Admiral. His first son, Gustav Henry, was the third generation to serve in the military. He obtained the rank of captain in the U.S. Marine Corps, and his second son, Gordon, was first lieutenant in the Army and was killed in action during World War I and is buried in France. Important military guys. The Roach General Store in Bristol operated from 1932 until 1988. The Bristow Post Office moved into the store in 1943 until 1966. The Cowton tradition was that Christmas carols were sung in the bell tower at St. Michael's Church every Christmas Eve before midnight mass. Their music could be heard in Hawesville. And there they are singing. In 1931, Tell City musician Dixie Davis wrote, I've got those sophomore blues for the Tell City woolen mill, who was introducing blue jean fabric at the mill. The song was aimed at the college market. Blue jeans became popular at that time, especially on the east and west coast. Dixie Davis's band played regularly in the 40s at the Rendezvous Dance Hall, Billy News Dance Hall, Midway Dance Hall. His bands often played at the Tell City American Legion, the Moose, the KSC, the VFW Country Club, every New Year's Eve. And he also wrote the school song, and Ann Manley brought a copy of it, and a photo of his band, and there's our school song, and Dixie Davis wrote that. <coughs> The Oil Township Oilers in 1947-48 are shown here. When we ran this photo in the newspaper asking for help to identify the team member, members, we got several calls and they all knew every person. But we also got a call from the 90-year-old cheerleader. So we have their names in the book as well, even though they're not in the photo, but we know all four of them as well. Um, the Sisters of St. Benedict are enjoying a picnic on the grounds in 1950. And my aunt, Dr. Victoria Pohl, is second from the left. This is Tell City's first IOOF building, built in 1869, located at Main and Humboldt Street. It had many businesses on the first floor, 
The Snappy Grill was there for 30 years, from 1960 to 1990. The IOOF built a larger building in 1894 at Maine and Mozarts, which became Capers uh, and Burnt. The Ohio Theater was located at 439 Main Street. A race car owned by Schaefer and Paul and Auto Parts is displayed in 1953 under the marquee to advertise a movie called Roar of the Crowd, which was about the Indianapolis 500. J&J Texaco Station on the east corner of 4th and Taylor Streets in Camelton had a powwow bench, they called it, at the back of their service station. Sol Mathena's store is seen in the background across the alley from the service station. The Consolidated School Wildcats played their home games in the Troy High School gym. Elton Eldon Hammock, seen kneeling fourth from the left, recalled their 1951 undefeated season and an embarrassing moment. Uh oh. What about an embarrassing moment? Well, let me start it over. Oh, there it goes. Don't ask me what that was about. <laughs> Anyway, Eldon had been substituted for during a game and was sitting on the bench flirting with the cheerleaders. A quarter ended and the team switched ends, and when he was reinstated into the game, he found himself wide open for an easy bucket for the opponents. <laughs> Luckily, he made up for it by scoring 28 points of, for his own team to win the tournament. <laughs> Fred Velke's Brewing Company was located on the corner of Maine and Jefferson in Tell City in 1861, where St. Paul's Catholic Church is located today. The brewery was destroyed by fire in 1887, but the Velke home survived and became the, rect excuse me, the rectory for St. Paul's priests. And it's way back there on the far left. St. Paul's Church is being constructed in this photo in 1953. The Velke home on the far right there was being used as a rectory. And the beautiful home of Dr. Coltus can be seen on the far left, which was across the street at 809 Main Street. St. Paul's School Accordion Band performed in 1953 at the Parent Teacher Association meeting. Jean Borders can be seen in the center smiling. <laughs> Tell City won the sectional in 1951. This is Esther Leisner <coughs> working at the Dobie Department Store Soda Fountain in 1950. Dobie's was located at 1020 11th Street in Tell City. The Moose Lodge, built in 1917, was located at 9th and Jefferson in Tell City. It was raised in 2005 to make way for St. Paul's Church Edition. The Moose Rat Skeller was used by members to play cards or play pool, and the members had breakfast in this dining room. Dave Adams and Robert Stillwell opened A&S Sales and Service in 1961 on State Road 66 between Camelton and Tell City. Radio Shack occupies the building today. Tell City High School won the sectional again in 1961 after Coach Gunnar Wyman led Tell City to three additional regional wins, he took a coaching job at Vincennes High School. Vincennes and Jasper High School had a heated rivalry during those years. Gunner is buried in Mayfield, Kentucky, 
and the back of his headstone reads, I had rather be here than in Jasper, Indiana. <laughs> 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 Coach Gunnar Wyman was inducted into the Indiana Hall of Fame in 1991. After the winning the, the sectional in 1961, the team went on to win regionals and semi-state in 1961. The gym was packed. Newspaper, newspaper editor Bob Cummings worked tirelessly for years to get a bridge built between Canton and Hawesville. The Bob Cummings Lincoln Trail Ohio River Bridge was named after him. It was built from 1964 to 66 at a cost of $5.5 million. The St. Croix Saints baseball team were the Lincoln Land Cheap Champs in 1965. <coughs> this shows Fort Wendell's grocery store was across the street from Fort Wendell's general store at the corner of Main and Market in Troy. The general store closed in 99 after 76 years of operation by the same family. The grocery store closed in 1977 and Harpenau Insurance occupies the building today. The Army Corps of Engineers began construction on the counts and locks and dams in 1963. The locks were placed in operation in 1966. The dam construction started in 65 and was dedicated in 1974. Hawesville is seen in the background of this 1969 photo. Mill City High School's undefeated football team in 1969. Bill Borders, who shared this photo with us, is fourth from the left, seated in the front. This is Troy's Public School's seventh and eighth grade basketball team in 1970-71. John Kaufman was the coach and Clyde Walters was the principal. Troy High School closed in 1972, making these the last Troy Trojan elementary school basketball teams. Troy High School had already closed in 1959. In 1972, a towboat with two loads of gasoline and fuel oil collided with the Canton locks and dams under construction at that time. The cargo spilled into the swift current and somehow caught fire. The Ohio River was ablaze for three miles. And I'll close with this photo shared by Ann Manley also of distinguished citizens gathered at Schweitzer Fest in 1994. All were active historical society members who worked tirelessly Preserving Tell City's history, which I use all the time to try to identify our photos. That's it.